Welcome back to an episode of Message and Call. Today we are going to talk about the 10 indicators or 10 metrics that you can use to get to predictability for your team. So let's get to it. Number one is plan versus actuals. Plan versus actuals is the most common indicator that a lot of organizations or teams use. This should not be the only indicator that you use for predictability. The reason is this, plan versus actuals is actually only looking at how good you're doing your estimate. It doesn't truly calculate or measure your output. The reason I say that is simple. In order for me to get 100% for plan versus actuals is basically I plan at 10 points, I finish at 10 points, and I get 100%. So we don't want to see that. So to me, plan versus actuals is a good indicator for me to help teams figure out where their true capacity is, where your true output is. So for example, after three sprints, if the team continuously completed actuals less than a plan, then the next time when we do planning, I'm going to ask them to plan less. The reverse is also true. If your actuals is always higher than your plan, then you want to ask them to plan more. So this is a way for us to get to, you know, to bring it up, to talk and dial it in, right? Dialing it in to see where the sweet spot is. So we don't want to use this as a metric to lock the team down. I don't want to say, well, the last time you do 10, so you should always do 10 now. We don't want to do that. So for me to get to predict now, the numbers we're looking for is that ideally I'm not looking for 100%, maybe always a plus minus, maybe there's always a fluctuation, okay? So maybe always maybe a 10% differences. So that will be what I would use it for. So that's plan versus actuals. Number two is how confident is the team in their commitment? So this is a real simple FISO 5, you know, ask around and capture the data. On averages, how does the team feel? For example, you know, if you do FISA 5, 5 being I'm absolutely really confident in what I can do in, in meeting my commitment, 0 or 1 being that, you know, I really can't get anything done. The reason why we want to capture that is because, you know, we should know how confident the team feels. If the team consistently feel like they are not confident in delivering the work, then guess what? Your predictability is going to be pretty low. We want to have some you know, not 100%, we can have about four, threes, fours, and fives is about right. And then we're going to use that data compared to the, you know, other indicators as well. So that's how you use it for predictability. Number three is velocity range. Now this came from Mike Cohn's tool. Mike Cohn has a tool called velocity range calculator. I'll share that with you guys. This tool allows us to calculate the range of a velocity. Basically what my mean is, what my max is, and what my average is. Here is the velocity range calculator from Mountain Goat software, uh, from Mike Cohen. So here it's pretty simple. All you have to do is plug in your numbers here. So for example, if our velocity, if we have five different velocities here, so which is 10, 15, 18, 16, 24, and all you have to do is click on calculate, and it gives you the values, the mean, the median of velocity, 16, and there is a 90% chances that your velocity fall between this range. So this is how you would use the tool. Very simple, very straightforward. The way I use this is I will capture the range for specific counts of sprints. And I will keep doing that and getting what we call a rolling, you know, five data points or rolling 10 data points. Now, the more data points you have, the better it is. So if you have rolling 10 sprints worth of data, what it allows us to see is that you can capture those ranges and then you can capture your median or your, you know, your averages of your, of your velocity. And then you can plot it on the graph. What you're going to start seeing is this band happening. Now, I'm looking for a tight band. In other words, my minimum max should be pretty small. And it should be pretty close to my averages. So the closer I see this band, the more predictable I am. Next up is velocity variance. So velocity variance is very similar to velocity range. So here, we're looking for variances in the velocity from sprint to sprint. The way it's commonly calculated is that we'll take three sprints worth of velocity, and then we find the standard deviation for that, and divide that by the averages of the three velocities. What you get is a number, and because you're dividing standard deviations divided by the averages, you get a percentage. Now, ideally, you want to get to about maybe 10% of variance. Too much variance tells me that I really don't know what my 
capabilities are at. So you'll, you'll get this swing, up and down swing. Again, the way I use this is that I want to see multiple of this. I want to see the ranges tightening. I want to see my standard deviation tightening up. The smaller my standard deviation, the better I am. Now this is measuring output. We're not talking about planning. We're talking about actuals, similar to the velocity range, it is actual output. So for the velocity variances, we're going to take the same thing as our example in velocity range before. So here, all we're looking for is three. So let's take the first three. So this is sprint one to sprint five. So let's take the first three to calculate what my standard deviation is. So real simple, uh, all I'm going to do is over here using the specific formula, and then I'm going to calculate the standard deviation of this, and that gives you the number here. Okay. So then, all I need to do is then calculate my averages among the three. So this is your standard deviation and this is your uh, averages. So we can do the same thing and, and then take the three. So let's do the same thing again. And this time we take this three and then we do the averages. Take this three. Uh, so we're doing a rolling three standard deviation and three uh, averages. So same thing here, we do the same thing here. So as you can see, now we have standard deviation, we have this. So all we do is just take the number, the, uh, this standard deviation divided by my averages. So and I'll make this into a percentage. So you can tell that my variances here goes up and down. Okay, so this is not a good or predictable team. I want my team to be uh, staying really close to it. You know, 8% is really good, 18%, so it's fluctuating 23, 8, and 18. Now, this could be probably because it's a brand new team. Now, ideally, I want to see these numbers somewhere close somehow for the next couple of months. So that's how we will measure predictably with the variances. Another way of using velocity variance is that because it calculates my standard deviation, guess what? I can apply it and I can make an assumption that based on normal distribution, in order for me to get to 68% confidence in my data, I can take my averages plus minus one standard deviation. Now that will give me 68% of confidence in where my data will fall, where my velocity will fall. Now you can get fancy and go all the way up to 99.7% which is plus minus three standard deviation. Number five is churn of work. Here we're looking to see how much unplanned work do you get, either unplanned or interruption to the work that you plan. So here I'm just only counting how much stories or story points that get added to the sprint after sprint planning. And also looking for any stories and story points that get removed after sprint planning as well. So here, all we're doing is just graphing it, and I'm looking for minimum of those. The more you have, the less predictable you get. Now, unless you get a specific number of story coming in all the time, then guess what? Then you're predictable in the number of stories coming in, or you're predictable in the unplanned work. Number six is backlog readiness. We want to know how ready the stories are for the team to consume. So we're finding, we're gonna count how many stories is in your backlog. Now, ideally, we want to have about three sprints worth of stories that is ready for sprinting. Reason for this is pretty simple. If the team hasn't seen the story and it's a last minute stories that they pull in and get ready, guess what? The chances of us getting the work complete might not be as high. So you might not be as good as completing the story as you would be if you have seen it much earlier on. You know, you might be looking at things that is potentially blocking the stories and you might be talking about that. So ideally a healthy backlog is what I look for. And a healthy backlog is about three sprints worth of work. So number seven is stability of teams. Stability of teams is basically I am looking to make sure that my team members are consistently the same. There is no changes to my team members. Um, no, no, no person has been removed, no person has been added uh, to the team. Ideally, you should be wanting to make sure that your team is stable, as stable as possible, because the team is delivering as one. So you get all these dynamics in play. When you make some changes, you're creating uh, some influence to the ability to produce work. 
so that reduce your predictability so you want a consistent team you want a fully 100 percent allocated dedicated team uh, as long as you can get them number eight is age of storage that is ready for sprinting how long has it been since the time that it was marked as ready for spring to the time that we pull it into a sprint what we're looking for is a sweet spot here we don't want anything that is too old that's been sitting in the story in the back for too long and guess what we don't want it to be too close i don't want to see one day or two days because one day or two days before sprint starts that means the possibility of the team seeing the stories or having the time to refine it is pretty low we don't want to have that and if that number is consistently low i can use that also with the backlog readiness compare those two that may tell you that guess what you may not have enough in your backlog that is ready for sprinting and when you don't have enough work that's ready for sprinting guess what you may pull only 10 stories and you're not ready and you don't have enough work now it's a scramble for so that's not healthy uh, that also does not help predictability so number nine is the burn down chart so burn down chart here i'm talking about stories or the story points that has been completed so we're looking for a burn down of the stories for each day so ideally i want to see a stepping down well, why is this important for predictability the reason is this if i see the graph showing me a lot of big steps maybe two or three stories and you know four or five days and then you know i close that story out now that tells me that the chances of us closing is pretty low because potentially if all three hits at the same time you know i'm gonna have what we call this is what we call a waterfall effect where you're trying to group things up and then trying to get things done so your chances of closing up or closing the stories is pretty low ideally want to do one at a time remember the goal is to finish work not to start work so number 10 is defect count trending so defect count trending is basically we're counting the number of defects uh, that comes into your sprint here we're talking about defects that is not part of the work that you've planned or in your sprint so usually this is what we call unplanned work the reason why we want to know is that the more defects that you get the less you are able to plan your work so it's an indicator also of quality which means you have not good quality if you don't have good quality guess what you don't know what's going to break therefore it reduces your ability to plan and predict your work so that's the 10 indicators or metrics that i use and what i see other organizations uses now are there any metrics or indicators that you use well please put it in the comments below and share it with me